uh, that was an excellent presentation masterly discussion on the assessment of parvi by none other than dr santanu sen gupta but uh, i have a small query that in most of the centers where only uh, a basic mo 2d and color is available how do you really go about it apart from doing a taxi and yeah. taxi for that matter is not excellent um, uh, for assessment of the rv function there has been a lot of questions being raised lately about taxi would you please elaborate on it i think uh, uh, whenever we uh, look uh, at, at a patient of any any cardiological patient and we are suspecting that there is some rv involvement uh, uh, re remember normally the left ventricle is bigger in size than rv whenever the rv is of the same size of lv or bigger than lv you have to start evaluating it and uh, you can look at the sizes uh, uh, have an rv focused view look at the base mid and longitudinal size uh, should report and as you said that if you don't have any other uh, uh, if the machine doesn't have uh, advanced things a tap say uh, gives a pretty good information it is good to have a good alignment of the mo across the lateral tricuspid valve annulus and look at the tap say and anything Uh, uh, the cutoff is around 17 anything less than that you are dealing with rv dysfunction also mentioning the ivc but i will tell you that wish if your machine is not having an rv s prime change your machine so because tissue i'm not telling that you should only go for strain tissue doppler is very much important now and i think it is the time that all the machines should be upgraded and should have a basic tissue doppler which is now uh, 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 i mean uh, now essential for for cardiology assessment okay that's a nice no, piece of advice i have a question dr sengupto yeah uh, if you have a impaired gls and the rv free wall in certain left uh, heart conditions disorders does it affect the prognosis absolutely so in uh, so let's say if the patient has a dilated cardiomyopathy and to let's say take two subset one patient of dcmp 30% ef normal rv function another patient of dcmp 30% and poor rv function the poor rv function is going to uh, have a out uh, a poorer uh, outcome so rv dysfunction in a in a setting of left ventricular problem has poorer outcome poorer five year survival so every patient either it is a ischemic heart disease dilated cardiomyopathy heart failure with reduced ef or preserved ef yesterday i was talking about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction so hfpf phenotype 3 has rv dysfunction their prognosis is poor mitral stenosis so patient of mitral stenosis going for tr or tricuspid valve annuloplasty should have an rv assessment because if the rv is failing your tricuspid annuloplasty will not succeed they will have a poor even if you are operating maybe they will have a poor outcome so the answer is yes rv dysfunction has poor prognosis even in the if the rv appears to be contracting adequately the strain values are impaired right so the, and then then the prognosis is affected also yeah so there there's a very important thing to identify so uh, what what you are trying to tell me is that we have seen that the patient's tapsy is normal rv s prime is normal but the strain is going down so the rv strain on the lateral wall is the first marker of rv dysfunction and it can change uh, it I, i don't know whether it is reversible there are now reports coming that rv strains uh, if they are going down are, are can be reversible uh, by uh, let's say in post covid era, era we have seen that reversibility of rv dysfunction has also been reported So the first to go is RV strain, then goes RV S prime, and then goes TAPSE. We can't see. Okay. Hello, hello, Doctor Shen Gupta. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Shen Gupta, are you using the RV strain pattern with the same pa package of LV strain, or you have dedicated RV strain pattern separately? Yeah, so I, I recently got upgraded, and I have it now a dedicated software, but. uh it is uh, expensive i know but if you don't have it uh, you can still use uh, the lv uh, uh, strain and and pull the machine and get get to have an rv the point is you should have some and how, value how frequently you are using this rv strain and how much extra time you are uh, 
taking for the strain petard this is hardly 20 seconds it takes hardly 20 seconds for me so the point is i don't use m mode to look at the left atrium yeah or or aorta i use that time and try to dig out and look at the rv by rv uh, tapse rvs prime and uh, uh, strain imaging so routinely it has to be done the good part is it is so easy to be done and i will like to uh, the point is it has come in the guidelines so lv strain and rv strain are in the guidelines we are talking about global longitudinal strain of lv and lv uh, right yeah. lateral so you should do, we should do it it hardly takes 1 minute more nothing else dr chengu so, yeah question from dr achut sarkar ARBC is there any specific importance of sub tricuspid longitudinal strain versus GLS? Sub tricuspid longitudinal strain versus think, GLS. Uh, so uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, if he's talking about a regional strain, uh, is that what he's telling? So uh, sub tricuspid uh, strain has come up in research, uh, uh, but let me tell you, uh, uh, in ARBC. Uh, the strain values are important because if you're if you're documenting RV dysfunction, the patients are going to uh, do poorer. But the, is is there any rules of regional strain either in LV or RV? The answer is no. It has not been uh, it has not been validated. Regional strain should not be reported. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If that's all about uh, Doctor Sangupta, I would now invite uh, Doctor Ishita Mojimdar. Uh, to come and deliver our uh, discussion. Dr. Ishita. Uh, 